So I'm David Evale, and I've talked to you about Century Sport Toolkit, and in particular about role of sport in social inclusion and uh, discrimination behaviors and how COVID-19 affected margin marginalization. Let's start. Role of sport in social inclusion. Well, we believe that sport is one of the best tools for inclusion. Uh, not because obviously the sport is free of discrimination. Uh, obviously, by nature, we know that there are numerous episodes of discrimination, of intolerance in, in the world of sport. But however, we think that is up to the organization and the association that gravitates toward the sport universe to foster and to promote a culture of fair play. And when I, I talk about a culture of fair play, I mean a culture of respect the opponent. Uh, even if it's different, his uh, is color is different, his belief is different, etc. So uh, even, however, we know that a culture of a play uh, must be support is a noble intention, but however, uh, we detect uh, and uh, we know that uh, in, the, in the sport, uh, in the sport world, in the sport universe, there are a lot of uh, num numerous of episodes of discrimination. So now I will try to uh, do a sort of, uh, I will try to distinguish six types of discrimination. First of all is discrimination against individuals with disabilities. As you know, people with disabilities have long been uh, ostracized and relegated to the margins of society. So as I said before, sporting activities is a great tool for inclusion and uh, integration for all those who are left uh, on the margin of society, including people with disabilities. So um, I think that it's important to promote, to guarantee them the opportunity to express their skill to the sporting activities. So, discrimination based on gender identity or sexual orientation. As you know, this type of discrimination reject, uh, stigmatize, and denigrates any form of non-heterosexual behavior, identity, relationship, or even community. So uh, this is an exclusion that can be uh, legislated, as it still happens in some countries, or implicit in, in which uh, is the same uh, uh, LGBT people or person that move away from sports to avoid the uh, to avoid suffering discrimination and uh, for example we can fight discrimination by, uh, based on gender identity or sexual orientation for example through awareness campaign for lgbt plus issues even in the sports field discrimination against individuals because of their religion as you know the migratory processes uh, have uh, favored encounter of different between between people of different faiths and different uh, origin, and that in this type of discrimination, it is the, a discrimination also present in sport, obviously, which excludes or disfavor uh, people for their religious convictions. So um, we believe that sports is sports practice should encourage should encourage the respect of the opponent, regardless of their religious belief or other, as I said before. Discrimination of citizenship against individuals because of the individual's birthplace. Um, that's, this is the type of discrimination. It's discrimination that establish a binomial between EU and non-EU uh, citizens, and uh, between citizens and foreigners. Then, therefore, those we who have citizenship rights and those who do not have these rights. So, those with uh, those with the right of citizenship have greater freedom of movement, movement, and therefore to practice sport at any level. And in the absence of the of this right, however, one is um, forced to um, on a series of uh, bureaucratic directi directives that uh, make it difficult to compete on any level and obviously obstacle and obstacle for freedom of movement. So 
this form of discrimination in our mind can be countered by straightening and the prevention and recognizing the importance of sport activities in facilitating the integration, the integration of uh, migrants of on the, and people of uh, different origin, of uh, foreign origin. Discrimination based on gender. Well, uh, this is the unfavorable treatment of a person because of his gender. And it is a discrimination that affects women usually by, uh, by excluding them from political, social, economic, cultural, and sports life. And for example, in the field of sport, we detect in many situations which women are treated less favorably or unfavorably for their being women. So, for example, they are not uh, considered to be up to uh, the par or uh, not considering strong enough or as good as men. And that's why, that's because um, this mix misconception has, um, and that's because sport mm, is still considered by many to be an exclusively male practice. So this, mis this misconception has alienated women to practice sports. And uh, in some sports, uh, women have been excluded. So gender discrimination must be tackled down by facilitating women's sports access to all sports. And the last type of discrimination that today we will see is discrimination based on race, color, and national origin. Well, as you know, people can be discriminated against because of the color of their skin, because of African ancestry, or belonging to minority ethnic groups, such as Roma. But in all these cases, we are talking about ethnic racial discrimination. And in sport, for example, racial, ethnic racial discrimination is revealed through episodes of intolerance, uh, marginalization, and uh, of people or something or, or even sometimes by federal regulations that specifically uh, disadvantage sporting practice to for minorities people so to counter this type of discrimination we must promote a sporting uh, culture uh, culture of or of uh, spur of um, fair, fair play that respect the opponent regardless their origin or their skin color, et cetera, as I said before. The last slide is how COVID-19 affected marginalization. Well, as you know, uh, we detected a rise in hate, hate crime, hate speech and violation of uh, fundamental rights. And many major sporting events have been canceled or postponed with uh, UEFA Euro 2020, won by Italy and the uh, Tokyo Olympic Games uh, 2020, for example. But among the victims of this pandemic are those who were marginalized even before the onset of, co of COVID-19 of pandemic. For example, people with disabilities, migrants, uh, minority ethnic groups, women, homeless people. So in the end, uh, the we, we saw that uh, the COVID-19 pandemic was an undemocratic phenomenon that affected everyone, but not in uh, the same way. Thank you.